The number of street attacks has risen dramatically over the past 10 years, so we decided to create a short documentary to improve awareness of the general public and to give them an insight into street attacks and why they occur. Walking back from um, a friend's house, and I got mugged in the street for uh, money. I was walking down Northumberland Street and two lads approached us asking for money and when we got to the bottom of Northumberland Street one of them actually threatened to punch us and then they swung for us just outside Grey's Monument. I was walking on my way home, back home from college and uh, at the bus stop I was standing and saw a car that was like passing in front of us and uh, actually behind it there was a bus. And actually, um, I, I mean, I was going because the bus was coming to stop where I was. And then when I was about to get in the bus, these people just came out of the car and started throwing eggs on me. I was in a nightclub in Darlington, a street nightclub. And um, I came outside. And people got wind. Um, a few guys got wind that I was gay. And so they decided that they were going to like, beat me up, basically. There was uh, seven of them decided to chase me through... Uh, do Darlington and uh, just, they got me and just beat me up. Luckily some um, some guys stopped in a car and scared them off. I don't, I don't particularly walk anywhere now on my own. Um, make sure that I'm always with other people get a taxi or a lift or whatever. It did for a little while because obviously at a young age you get scared quite easily and I can go places on my own at night or anything like that. It's very uh, actually, it was a bit late in the evening when I was going back home, and it was in winter as well. You know how it gets dark uh, like a, a bit early, and uh, since then I'm scared of walking myself at night. Yeah, I got quite quite nervous about going out sometimes, uh, especially at like, um, night times. I'm by myself, I get quite nervous, quite bad anxiety sometimes. Beaten up, beaten up by quite a few people, like on to one person, um, stamping on the hairs, beating up, kicking them out of the I got uh, kidnapped and left for dead on the field. Just a sunny day, about three, half three. Some of the home from my dad, just been the cash machine as well. I can't pose up my neck up there. I haven't thrown well, so show tortoise, I'll go up the same. Shaggy's hand next to my hand, really tells me getting caught. I get a couple of strikes to the back of the head. The car just pulls away. It was like two other lads, some laughing in the back, smacked off our face. We were from there on our knee, which was ridiculous, but never mind. And uh, then we were just driving, and I was getting punched in the head, and I realised, God, I didn't ask here. We were driving down for a bit. At this point, I thought our lunch off was a joke before serious. So I was like, we looked a bit wrecked. I was driving around for a bit, and we pulled up. It's Benwell, the only reason I knew it's Benwell, because like, my friend lives there. So we're going to Hardy, where's your money? I've just seen you go to the fucking cash point, man. So where are they? You haven't got any? Are you taking a fucking piss? Yeah, you fucking want to give me that money right now, I'm going to fucking cut you off. Pull the knife out, and threaten with the knife obviously. So I thought, oh, I had my lip ring in the day. So I thought, I'll take my lip ring out. There are two reasons it's going to get ripped out, and I'm going to be like crying like a damn with blood all over. Or I got even in the car, because I was in the car. Garb shell was asking for me money, threatening his rib and knife around. It's more than hardy. I'm not in my eye now. Fuck's this. And then uh, takes me money, takes me four hours. Yeah, great. The idea, I think, as well. Paul Robert J. Hall. We'll have fun with that. So then, I have to get the cash point then. Yeah. Uh.
Oh, is that the hash point? Oh, eh? I've got the skin one. And that's what I know. Straight to the head. Then we pulled up this house, then I knew it was serious that was a bit nervous, but scared. Pulled up and then we're just there. Just waving us up. Fucking get I was sitting with him on the side. It was really scary. One you had a knife. Where did you have to do it? Got just the place. Supposed to be me, me, me. Seven o'clock at night, four drink. So I want to get back to that other people. I didn't know what was happening. Next thing I know, I'm in the car. I'm in the car, just driving around. I was petrified this time. I didn't know what happened. What was going to happen? I didn't know where I was going to go. Just really scared. Like, I was just, I just really didn't know what to do. Just petrified. I don't really remember much. Someone's probably shouting. The next thing I know is police station, no random one. In the court case, uh, the driver got away with it. She, because you see, she, she didn't know it was going to happen, it wasn't planned. The, where um, two little lads got probation, and the other lads got away with the band. The only one got charged, and that was Gareth, and he got 21 months. But he's, uh, only, he's appealing the sentence now, so he'll be out next three months. And he just got a rehabilitation order because we're mainly drug addicts, so no justice at all. For a normal case like that, if he wasn't on drugs, he would have got about 12, 15 years. There are no set reasons why street attacks take place. However, the increase in binge drinking has a large role to play in the increase of street attacks in the UK.